Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. Um, sorry, I just said avoid illegal snags by telling them they're recorded. <laughs> you know we're being recorded, eh, Mark? Okay. <laughs> we are B-Pal Picks. That's the first time I saw that come up there. And uh, I'm Pal. This is this is Bork. That's how we got B Pal. We have uh, we're we're pr pretty much we're professional cappers, and what we do is we talk about sports and we talk about who's going to win, and we are very successful at picking those winners. We just did a whole bunch of baseball picks. You can see that um, if you can go to uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which I'll probably be changing that because I've expanded into all the sports now. Um, we're also going to be doing lives for uh, football games and all kinds of stuff coming up. Um, we'll be looking out for uh, Steel Flyers, uh, www.steelflyers.com website that's coming up. Lots of fun stuff. And we also, um, especially because you usually have to run after we do this, on my Sports Fanatic news page, sometimes you upload it an hour later if you want to see the video. You can go there to the uh, one video is there now. I don't know if you put the weeds for baseball up yet. Uh, we already have 10 views on my account for that. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. You, can go to, uh, you can go to that. You can go to uh, several different places. We are expanding everywhere as much as we possibly can to get to this fine purveyor of picks that we are out to the land. Um, anyways, now we are looking at – we did ball. So we're going to do a couple of the other sports – uh, we got a couple of plays that we're looking at of possibilities here. Um, these are not plays that we gave to our Patreon members, but we still think they're decent plays. Anyways, um, we're going to start off with uh, the NBA basketball playoffs. Um, a very interesting series. Um, game seven, Nuggets versus the Clippers. What are we looking at there, Joe? Well... Obviously, the better play, you're not really getting anything if you put anything on the Clippers because they still expect them to figure out a way to win game seven, even though they couldn't figure out a way to close out the other two games. So you would think being down by more than 10 to 12 at the end of games when you're coming in the roundabout times of games is eventually going to catch up to Denver. But who knows? <laughs> I mean, this year is so crazy. Everybody's coming back to the Clippers haven't shown a sign of being able to close out a game at all in these past couple games. They've actually done the exact opposite. So they've given you no confidence that they can close out a game. So if you want to lean away, I wouldn't say to bet on it big money because that would be stupid uh, because I don't want to give people a thing that – it has a 50-50 shot probably, uh, in my opinion. But I would lean towards the Clippers because it might be a 52 percent chance or not the Clippers the Nuggets because there's a 52 percent chance that we could probably beat the Clippers again because the Clippers can't figure out how to keep a lead <laughs> so if that remains the same or because of the momentum Denver has built they jump out instead of LA then that completely changes the complexion of the game that's why I would give a slight lean like a two percent lean to the Denver Nuggets yeah, overall, you would think that, you know, with players like George in there for the Clippers and uh, that they would, you know, have enough experience to be able to not falter in that way. But, I mean, dropping 16-point leads, and it's it's been really surprising that this Clippers team has not been able to put this away already. Now, that being said, the Nuggets have had one have had pushback all playoffs. I've really liked their energy. They haven't given up any at any time um, that I've watched them play, and that's really what's pushing them through. To me, they're almost like uh, in if in a comparable would be like the Dallas Stars are in the NHL right now. They're being outplayed, but just persevering and believing in themselves. And and um, maybe in the Nuggets sense, it's not even so much that. It's just they're outworking their opposition with the Nuggets. Um, Dallas just seems to persevere and get uh, be able to get uh, stay on the edge and get some opportunities and bounces go their way, where the Nuggets just seem to be able to uh, outwork their opposition. Um, and there, there, I think there's a good enough possibility that it happens here in this game as well because of what we've seen historically, in the, or at least in the series anyways, that if it's going to be a coin flip, as I've always said, you might as well go with the underdog. 
might as well take the juice. Um, coin flips are 50-50. Juice is over. You're getting, is, if you keep on doing that over and over again, if you got a 50-50 game, logic would say that eventually you will be up over time. So that would be my pick as well if I'm going to bet anything on this game at all. Um, like I said, we're not giving this pick to our Patreon members because I'm not really big on doing so in 50-50 splits. Um, not really like giving out 50-50 splits. I like to have much more of a confident pick when I give it to people Just that are famous. Yeah. Our, yeah. Our, our uh, Patreon's for the more exclusive where we're more, uh, got more feel that that's definitely going to happen and we have very high confidence. I don't think either of us have very high confidence that Denver's going to win this game. <laughs> right. It's more it could happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why you should lean that way because you're not going to make any money if you really, unless if you put a bank load into the, which I wouldn't recommend doing. With the way the Clippers, Clippers are playing, why yeah. would you? Want to do that, right? Yeah, that would be stupid. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to the hockey pick now, and we were just talking about this series and relating to the Nuggets and Clippers. Vegas versus Dallas. Um. This is again one I'm not I'm not giving this hockey pick and I'm my my proclivity is towards hockey. I love hockey. That's my my number one sport. I'm not giving this out as a pick because for me anyways, the same reason sort of with the Nuggets. Um this is almost a 50-50 game and it really shouldn't be, should it, Joe? Uh it shouldn't be, but it's not just because the stars on Dallas, like for example, you see Sagan doing stuff you haven't seen him do, well, really ever in some aspects, like blocking shots and uh, getting in the shooting lanes. You haven't really seen him do that much in his entire career, per se. So, bonus, obviously, uh, putting him down lines for a couple games did light a little bit of a fire in his belly there, and now you're seeing the uh, production swing. Uh, even if he's not always potting it in the net or getting assists, he's helping you on the other end, which in some aspects is way more helpful, especially in the postseason. To have a guy that's that quick, that has that skill, that has now bought in on the other side of the ice. So, I think he, they have a coach that's unconventional in a lot of realms, but sometimes unconventional works. And you have a lot of unconventional players in Dallas. Like Tyler Sagan, you wouldn't consider a conventional hockey player. Jamie Benn, you probably also would not consider. Maybe because they're very... Uh, strong-minded personality. So having a coach that's sometimes very anxious but very strong-minded also, it probably works. Because if you don't listen to what he's going to do, he's just going to do what he did with Sagan, and you're going to be on the fourth line or you ain't playing. So um, that's the way, even years ago when he was coaching, I remember when they were talking about his flashback uh, with uh, other teams and stuff, uh, th that's how he's always been and within organizations. Yeah, you have to live up to his values. Otherwise, he's not really going to want to play you a lot or put you in. So we see t players responding to that. And then first and foremost, Hudobin. <laughs> uh, uh, Anton Hudobin's playing like if there was a Vezina award winner for just the playoffs, like if they had a postseason one and a regular season one, Hudobin would probably be the fourth runner right now for the postseason one. So if that keeps happening, it's going to be very hard for Vegas because the main reason they're not scoring is, yes, Dallas' defense is playing the best it's played, even though that was their juggernaut of their regular season. But they are keeping them to what they say in postgame, not the highest opportune shots. They're letting Hudobin make the big saves when he has to, but they're letting shots come on, but they don't care about the shot total. They care about the high percentage total. Where... Even in high percentage shots, Udobin's been robbing people. And then the one game, it was only 3 nothing, And they put in Jake, which I think helped an energy curve. Because obviously, as soon as after that game, the Stars were right back to being who they looked at before. That game didn't seem to phase them at all. So I think that was another smart move for the energy. It's going to be hard for Vegas, but I would lean them in this game. Because they're a team, we talk about teams that never back down and never show that they're quitting or, or trying to say, eh, we just can't figure this shit out. But that's never been Vegas. So they're going to find a way, and they're one of those teams out when there's a will, there's a way, probably applies the most to. 
where both of these teams are like that. That's why this was going to be a fun series. Because Dallas, when they're playing their best, is usually, we're going to find a way to do this, even if it ain't the prettiest or sexiest thing, we're going to find a way. Well, that's usually how Vegas, Vegas can win in unsexy ways if they have to. They've done it in the past. This could be a game that ends up being like that. So I would lean Vegas because I think they're going to play a little bit because they have players that can do it more to try to beat up the stars a little bit and play more to playing their game and beating them at their own game. Try to do that early on because Vegas has a lot of of jack-of-all-trade types of players. And then you need to get Marshall so (laughs) going. That's the the big Achilles heel there. You need to get Jonathan Marshall so going. Yeah, um... They're out possessing. They're they're out. Uh, they they have the offensive advantage. Uh, I mean, they have like you said the shot advantage as well. And I'd say they've had enough quality shots where they should be winning these games. To tell you the honest truth, um, if I have to make a pick here, I got to keep on leaning Vegas. I mean, you can't out possess and out shoot somebody every game and lose every game, can you? Uh, I guess maybe we'll find out tonight because it's going to be the last game if they can't find if they can't find the uh, if they can't find the uh, way to get past Hudobin. It's really that's all it is. Um, it, I, they seem frustrated too. They uh, after what happened in the previous where they almost lost to Vancouver because Demko just went. They it doesn't seem like they've been able to get their confidence back. Yeah, well, it's since. because you have that again. You had Demko go off. They figured out a way in the third game in the third or in the last game in the third period in Game Seven, uh, where they're going to have to do that again because you have a goalie that's hot as a firecracker again. So having that back to back yet, I can wear on you a little bit. I agree. Yeah. The advantage here is that Vegas is, uh, it should be in their heads that they've got nothing to lose now. So maybe that really will take the um, pressure off of them and they'll loosen up a little bit and start playing their game, build some confidence. It would not surprise me if Vegas came back and won this series, three games. It would not surprise me at all. The way Dallas is playing, Vegas simply gets their confidence back and keeps on playing like they have been the last, basically this whole series, it would not surprise me if they came back and won. I wouldn't bet on it, but I mean, if you wanted to throw up whatever doesn't money that doesn't matter to you on something, that wouldn't be a bad play. I'm going to lean Vegas here. Uh, um, over under, it's it's almost like if it's under, it's probably Dallas going to win. So, and, and I think the I think the total is five. So if I'm going to say Vegas, I'm probably going to lean towards the over where they find the uh just what works to get past happy bull and it's they all start flowing in on this game that, that that's yeah, a good Dobin. possibility yeah. who dove did i what did i say happy yeah. yeah. i think i did that, that, was, I think I did that, was, that before yeah that was a throwback <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i did Nikolai that before happy i said happy bull yeah. instead of who <laughs> okay so we'll do the two nfl games today I will say that we're not super high on these games, or maybe you are, and maybe these will these leans will help you with your pick or what you decide to do. First, Steelers versus Giants. Uh, what do you where where are you going with that? Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say really high for that one. Isn't the way would it be the word I would, use? I would just use it's useless like to put into it because if you bet on the Steelers, you got to have to put in a decent chunk of change there to actually make anything. And then you're going to be very pissed off since there's no preseason. If, like some other games happen, the inferior team finds a way to have a great game and win. So that's why it's more, as we were saying before the video, it's like a feel-out week for the NFL because there was no preseason and you, all these teams didn't really get to play the regular reps they would play with the team. I mean, practice doesn't get you game ready. Players say that all the time. So playing preseason is the closest to being able to get you game ready. And even that's not the same thing, but it's the closest to be able to get you game ready. So it's going to be interesting. We also have to remember Roethlisberger's coming back. Uh, he hasn't played in a while. So how good is he going to do? Uh, so there's a lot of things that go into this game. 
Connor has to continue to improve after having a bad year. Uh, and the other running back th- that they picked up, I can't remember who they drafted, but the young running back in Pittsburgh, he would need to step up. I mean, the, this game should go to Pittsburgh for sure on paper. But there's been a, quite a few things that didn't come as seamlessly as on paper so far already in the league. That's why if you want to give a lean, the lean's going to be towards the Steelers, but there's not a, unless if you're putting in a good amount, you're not making a hell of a lot on that because they're at a minus, depending on what you're looking at, 250 or up. So yeah. it depends what site you're looking at. Yeah, it's not worth the risk. When, like, I agree with you that when, especially for football, unless if you have extra money and you want to give a shot at the Giants and just say, well, I don't need this money anyway. Uh, they're at a plus 210. Let me just put it on. Like, if yeah. you have useless money you want to throw at something, then you could do that with the Giants, but don't do that unless if you literally have useless money, you're not even going to get made for losing. Yeah, if the Giants are going to beat the Steelers in in a game like this, this might be the place where they could do it for all the reasons you suggested. Uh, Because it's kind of evens out with the fact that there has been no preseason, that both teams are just trying to get their game. Yeah, the other thing with the Giants is if Judge becomes the upper tier, because Joe Judge, for most people, is not where there's not much of a middle, which either he's going to not be the best head coach or he's really going to impress. So if he shows a very great first game with a good scheme, that nobody's ever seen his scheme. So mm-hmm. if he really comes out and performs very well in the realm of what he wants to do, and him and Daniel Jones are like Kimpatico, well, that's not very good for for the Steelers either because their quarterback one is 30, 38 now, I think, and just came off of an injury and can't move that much. So if you get a lot of pressure, that's not going to work. Where Daniel yeah. Jones can move, he just has to stop fumbling. So if they fix that issue – then that can also really help. That's why that game uh, definitely should go to the Steelers, but what should happen hasn't happened so far in all the games in the NFL. (laughs) Right. If they can, yeah, there's a lot of things that could happen there that's not really worth the juice you're getting for the Steelers to take that spot. Not really a big fan of the game at all. Uh, Titans versus Broncos. Uh, That one, again, the only way you're going to, I mean, you can make some on the Titans, but... That's one that if you want to bet on the underdog, it wouldn't be a half bad lean or idea. Because, I mean, the Titans, we have to remember, one one off of the running game. And then Ryan Tannehill would throw within the 10 to 5 yard line. So if they have any issues at all with the running game, or because of the preseason, now it is Derrick Henry, so I don't think this will happen, but because of the preseason, he's not the motor he was, where we saw running backs play great in week one, so I think that might be actually an advantage to the runner because the defense isn't as in sync. Yeah. But the um, the thing there is then they still need Tannehill to be in sync like he was last year. So without a preseason, you might make a few blimps from the 15-yard line rather than make those perfect decisions he seemed to always make time and time again last season. That, so if you want to – and then Drew Locke also was solid last year and kind of improved over time. He's nothing extravagant, at least at this point. He needs to show more, obviously. But if he can continue to improve and work well in a Vic Vangio system and kind of get better and better each season, well – he usually limited the turnovers last year. So this is kind of a battle of two teams that tend to limit turnovers. So I would say I would lean because I just really think uh, Locke's a little bit undervalued in the NFL. I don't think he's ever going to be a top, say, 10 QB maybe, but could he be top 12 to 14? Yeah. So, like, that's, like, right outside, sitting pretty right outside of your top 10. And that's still a quarterback. If you're in that spot, you could obviously win. Uh, I'm sure Denver fans will like this. A Super Bowl with. Uh, so, the, the that's why I, I will give a lean. Because Tannehill, you can win a Super Bowl with, but it's based off of your system. Drew Locke uh, might be a quarterback that you can win a Super Bowl with that's 
Yeah, somewhat based off of your system, but also based off of him steadily improving from being a second round pick out of Mizzou that ended up starting in his first year. So uh, I would say that he showed good signs for being a second round pick. Normally you give them a year, but he ended up getting pushed in right away. And that's why I would say that's a pretty good one for the end goal. Not to mention the fact that the um, Broncos now have Melvin Gordon, who's a hell of a running back. So you have a pretty good running back matchup here with Philip Lindsay, who's also no slouch. And then just to have an extra person that also ain't half bad when he uh, has some good games, they have Royce Freeman as the third running back. So this will be a fun game, two completely different type of running backs to just watch if you want to stay up for it. For you, it's not that late. For the East Coast, this game is late as hell. It starts at 10-20. But if you want to stay up for it, then you have a lot of good guys. Deshaun Hamilton's also a good receiver. K.J. Hamler, obviously, uh, for my uh, Penn State people on Denver. So I'm sure some Penn State, Pennsylvania people are going to be saying, forget about sleep tonight. I'm uh, watching the Broncos and Titans. Um, so this will be a fun one to watch. I would say you could lean towards the underdog there just because I could see this being a really close game that – the, the Broncos could end up winning because, I mean, both these teams last year had good defenses and the Broncos had the better passing game. Even with Drew Locke in, they had the better passing game to the Titans. So if they can pass better and now what's in second season uh, of adding more talent to your team uh, rather than subtracting to get assets for the future – like other teams did, they're kind of setting it up for Drew Locke to be what seems like their future starter because they got him a lot of assets. So I would say you don't know how to guard any of those assets either because a lot of them are rookies or second-year players. So I think that could favor the Broncos too because the Titans might be thrown off going, I don't know who the hell this guy is. I know, like, I know he's great, but I don't know how his play style is yet. I mean, we didn't play a preseason, so I could really scout him and all that. So – Scouting someone from college only helps you so much in the next level if you haven't seen them play a lick in the league yet, even in the preseason. So I yeah, think that might benefit Denver. Maybe Lions. Broncos in the spread. You know, that would be a safe pick. You take that in a parlay. That would not a bad play at all. Well, okay, that's our full 42%, boys and girls. That's all we have to give. Thank you for being part of this fine programming. Um, hope this helped you out with your picks. I'm excited for our picks that we have on our Patreon. We'll let you know tomorrow how those work out. And much, much more. We'll have picks for you tomorrow as well. For Joe Bork, I am Pearls of Wisdom. We are BPAL. Uh, thank you for hitting the subscribe and the bell and all of those uh, things you've been doing there. It really helps out the algorithm. And we love you for it. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Enjoy the games.